Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and I've got a quick tip tutorial for you and it's how to sculpt an already compressed kick and make it more punchy and more dynamic. Maybe you're trying to use that kick in a different genre or you just need to completely rework it for the track you're working on. Using a transient shaper to do it is your best bet. And I'm gonna be using Transient Shaper 2 from Shack Audio Technologies. It is a really great plugin. The output is fantastic. It's got just enough features inside of it to make it really worth while and the thing I like about it in fact is how few parameters I have I have an attack I have a release both of those have independent envelope controls or envelope shapes so we've got a quick gate we've got a little bit of a slower one and then even a slower attack and release time for that and those are gonna come in very handy when we really get into the nitty-gritty of shaping our new kick uh, there's also a saturation control, which is used when you have a really high attack value to shave off the higher end. It's going to keep some of the crunchiness, but just shave off that peak and you can get a flatter response, which will allow you to use the gain here to boost it up and get it louder. We're going to do all of that right now, fairly quickly inside of Ableton Live. So the first thing I need to do is create a new audio channel and I'm going to take the audio from that kick set that to in. I'm going to turn the audio off. I'm going to hit it to record. And I'm just going to be using this so we can visually see what's happening to the kick. And because I've turned the audio off, we're not going to hear it. We are going to be able to hear what the transient shaper is doing because that's the audio that, you know, is going to be sent out to the master output. The last thing I'm going to do is come into my compressed kick. And because I am looking to have a bigger attack transient, I want my kick to be more dynamic and a little bit shorter. I'm gonna to wanna to pull down my gain here so I can have a bigger ceiling. Um, you know, probably around negative six dB is a good place. And this is just gonna allow me to really boost up my attack transient without redlining or cutting anything off. It's just gonna give me room to play with it, okay? So let's go ahead and just run the kick. And I'm gonna go ahead and play with this attack parameter here. And you're gonna see this bit right here. This is the transient, right? And what we're gonna be doing with this attack parameter is boosting that and making it louder. So let's go ahead and do that. So hopefully you can hear and see what's happening here. See how much bigger that transient is now? And it's also much more snappy and punchy uh, on the output. And here it is at max. It's really, really big now, and it's a much punchier kick. And look at, we're still redlining, even though we gave it 6 dB of headroom on the sample. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, using these different envelopes is gonna give us a shorter or thicker transient. So let's go to the gate, which is gonna give us a shorter clicky sound. And let's move over to the, uh, the right here, just hear the differences in character. So pay attention right here, just in case you can't hear it, you're not using great headphones. If I switch from here to here, you're actually gonna see that this part is getting bigger as well. So essentially, and we just gotta take that envelope, um, We've just made the attack transient bit. We're just saying it's a bigger part or we want this uh, much more of that section to be amplified. And that's what we're doing there. Now, we've already gotten our desired effect in that this is a more punchy kick, but we can make it even more punchy by reducing the release time. So let me zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit record and play with the release time. And then I'm gonna jump down to the envelopes to show you uh, the different character you can get from those as well. Do you hear how it's getting crunchier as I reduce the, the, the release here? So that's pretty crunchy. If I double click to set it back to zero, so no release. That's a really nice kick. And that's a really short, crunchy kick. Now let's play with the release times down here, the envelope style. Now we have a much shorter, crunchier, more dynamic 
punchier kick. And we've only had to tweak out essentially two parameters and then choose the right envelope for what we're going for. Now there is the drive control and this adds saturation, which will reduce the harshness that can be added when you push the attack to such a high degree. And when we use that, as I said in the beginning of the video, that's where the again is going to come in handy because as we increase this, the overall volume, everything is actually going to come down. So we'll need to increase that volume by using the gain control. Let's go ahead and check that out. You see how it's shrinking over here? Everything is coming in a little bit flatter. And now I can increase the gain so we can get to back to where we were. Listen to that kick. Now let's bring the release back. Actually, bypass first. All right, completely different kick there. Let's increase the release. Listen to that. Oh my gosh, it's such a difference. Let's go ahead and put the release into the positive territory to see what happens as we increase the release section. Now we've got almost like an EDM kick. So we went from sort of a dubstep kick to a lo-fi hip hop kick, and now we're into EDM territory, all with just these parameters inside of this incredible Transient Shaper 2 plugin. Look at how big it is now, that's insane. And it sounds really good too. So yeah, there you go. That's how to reshape uh, any kick from your sample pack. As I said, that was a compressed kick from I think a dubstep pack that I got from Loop Masters. And let's say I just wanted to use it. I liked it, but I wanted to shape it a little bit. And I moved it to a hip hop style one. And then we brought it all the way into EDM territory like peak hour, big room type stuff. But if you've recorded a kick drum or any sort of percussion, you need to manually shape it after the fact, after the recording, you don't have any more studio time or maybe it's just not hitting hard enough. A transient shaper is what you're gonna wanna use and transient shaper two is one of my favorites. Again, just because of how easy it is to get great results. Anyway, Transient Shaper 2 from Shack Audio Technologies is available now on pluginboutique.com. Click the link in the video description to check it out. And as always, I'm Joshua Casper here. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.